having a weird day. Like, this weather has me off and everything, but hear me out. It was a beautiful fall morning today, right, Chicago? Right? Absolutely perfect. Like, main character energy of the morning. So I was like, I'm going to go take myself out for a little cup of coffee. And I did. And when I got to the coffee shop, this guy just kept trying to talk to me. And I clearly, I didn't want to engage. I had my headphones on, wasn't saying anything. And he keeps trying to talk to me. So I get my coffee, I leave. That's why I notice this man follows me out of the shop. And when I still don't respond to him, I hear him call me a little bitch. And it's like, you think I'm little? <laughs> How tiny am I? Can I fit into your coffee cup? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, hot take, I love being catcalled. <laughs> I think it's fun, um, but only when the person doing it is creative. Like, if you're not gonna get creative, get out of here. Um, I was wearing a cute little top the other night at like 10.30 in Lincoln Park, okay? Like, I was providing material, and this, <laughs> this man yells out of his car window, hey, show me your tits. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> So I had a little fun with it, and I was like, they're not ready yet. <laughs> they're preheating. I have really small boobs. <laughs> Anyone else here with small boobs? <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. It's, sir, it's relatable, is it not? Like, I, I never thought of myself, though, as someone with small boobs until I kept getting hounded with Instagram ads that are like, this little bra is perfect for teeny tiny bitches with microscopic titties. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a teeny tiny bitch with microscopic titties. <laughs> I know, part of me's a little scared to one day get a mammogram, because like, what are they gonna do, pinch me? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think that there's just something about me where people think that they can say anything unsolicited, unwarranted to me. Um, case in point, <laughs> this one woman just straight up told me that I've got tampon commercial energy. <laughs> <laughs> I took it as a compliment, though. I was like, okay, thank you. You think I do coke? <laughs> you think I do coke and play tennis? <laughs> you think I'm rich? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, but I love tampons. <laughs> yeah. um, if you're not laughing, I'm guessing you're into pads, and that's fucking weird. <laughs> and I know for a fact there's at least one bitch in here who's like, actually, I love my diva cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, not on my stovetop, honey. <laughs> no, uh-uh, no. Tampons are where it's at. Tampons are where it's at. And like, it's my favorite time of year right now. You know, like Halloween just happened. You know the game, like, guess how many candy corn are in the jar? Love that game, but I like to play, guess how many tampons are in that woman? <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> Seven, damn. <laughs> um, I would say two on a good day. And by that I mean when I forget. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I do. Have a, I have a question for the tampon users in the room. Um, do you guys just ever get a little depressed and leave it in? <laughs> Toxic shock my ass. I don't know. Do I believe in toxic shock? I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> and I know they put the little pamphlet in the box, but <laughs> I'm a woman, I can't read. <laughs> I need a picture book. <laughs> so rude. I bet if I did open that stupid little pamphlet, it would just say like, lorem ipsum 85 times. <laughs> I guarantee you. I feel like this is a good point um, of my time up here to just go ahead and acknowledge this is my voice. <laughs> like this, this is just what I sound like. Like this isn't like a fun like little stage bit I do. Like I, I, live, my, I live my life sounding like this. 
Um, I sound like one of those wooden signs that you actually find at the back of a Marshalls. Like one that says, but first, coffee! <laughs> I sound like I'm really into crystals. <laughs> and the thing is, I am really into crystals. <laughs> like, I love that New Age stuff. Any people in here into New Age? Okay, like 10 people trying to be better. That's good. <laughs> the rest of you get with it. I, um, I'm big into like manifesting. And even if you don't know New Age, you know manifesting because all of you have TikTok. And right now, I am manifesting a dump truck ass. <laughs> Just like don't look because it's not working. <laughs> but I love crystals. Crystals, crystals are so great. Okay, and my mom got me into crystals. And go figure, because she's like a white hippie woman from Indiana, so it was either rose quartz or meth. Um, <laughs> Fortunately, she chose the right crystal, and uh, she has me out here. I'm, actually, I'm wearing them tonight. I always wear them on stage. I've got my sodalite and my fluorite on for protection, which is so cute because I did get chlamydia. <laughs> and I feel like she should have seen that coming because isn't that the whole point? But yeah. But she should have. I'm gonna call her later. <laughs> I'm crazy, you know. I, um, I do, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm easy to stereotype, like, I get it, I get it, um, but sometimes it does hurt my feelings. Um, when I got into an Uber last week, I got in and the driver was playing The weekend. okay? I get in, I say, hello, and this man changes it to Jason Mraz. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to kill yourself? God. But I, I love The weekend, you guys. I'm cool. I'm a cool girl. Um, according to Spotify, I actually listened to The weekend for 19 hours last year. That's impressive. Um, I masturbated 19 hours <laughs> last year. <laughs> and I'm gonna beat the record this year! No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Masturbation. That concludes my crowd work. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if, you, if you couldn't tell by everything about me, I am a bit of a girl boss. <laughs> Don't clap for that. <laughs> um, for those not familiar with the term girl boss, essentially it is a woman who was a total bitch in high school, who's just a little bit too dumb to become a nurse. <laughs> Um, but for me, being a girl boss just means that every morning I wake up and I shit with my legs crossed. <laughs> like this. And get up and I go to work in sales. And it's fun, it's fun. Actually looking, this is my, this is my favorite part um, of the night. When I, when I look at all of you and I try to find a gentleman here who does sales, finance, real estate, anything like that. Um, what about uh, you, sir, wearing a baseball cap indoors? <laughs> what do you do to make money? Besides generational wealth. <laughs> you work in PR. 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 Cool. What's your name? My name's Owen. Owen. Sick. <laughs> I love asking for a white men's name in the crowd because typically it's like Matthew, Paul, Luke, Peter, John, one of the 12 apostles. Um, lovely to meet you, Owen. Um, I'm corporate too. I'm part of the corporate world, nine to five. And, uh, and it's so fun. I feel like I'm a movie character going into work all the time like the movie Nine to Five. And um, I'm like getting really into like office fashion, but I'm always like pushing the limits of HR. And um, like I will wear this into the office. I don't care. <laughs> um, and the more I get into fashion, honestly, like the worse I feel for men. 
you know? Because you guys, you got the short end of the stick. Yeah, you got like a corner in like Nordstrom Rack. Um, but the thing is, men in the room tonight, you have something I will never have, and I'm not talking about fundamental human rights. Um, <laughs> I'm actually talking about Patagonias. <laughs> yeah, you guys have Patagonias. And let me tell you, I love seeing a man in a Patagonia because that is peak male self-expressionism at its finest. Because when I see a man wearing a Patagonia, I know to cover my drink. <laughs> And if it's a vest, I'm hiding my drywall too. <laughs> uh, I do feel strongly that there is a Venn diagram of like men who have punched drywall and men who really want to tell you about crypto. <laughs> and like in the middle is probably Owen. <laughs> um, so I know I mentioned I'm a bit of a girl boss. I did a really cool girl boss thing uh, pretty much like a year ago to the day. I actually got my fallopian tubes taken out. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I, I love telling a large group of people that because most of the time, like some gals are like, woo, you go girl. And then everyone else is like, what are fallopian tubes? <laughs> um, they're like the water slides of the reproductive system. It's like the fun part, the Miss Frizzle part. Like, the Wisconsin Dells are down there. And, uh, and I got them taken out, and I'm only 25, so I was like terrified to tell my doctor that I just, you know, hey girl, wanna sterilize myself. Um, and, cause you hear the horror stories of people telling their, their doctors this, and then them being like, well hey, what if you change your mind? What is your future husband gonna think? What if you want kids down the road? But my doctor didn't say any of that. No, all she said was, this is a really good idea for you. <laughs> Um, and that was it, and I'm sterile. <laughs> and um, mainly, I, I did like sterilize myself uh, because I like to have fun. <laughs> I like to raw jog. Um. <laughs> fun facts, that's actually my, uh, my office icebreaker. <laughs> hey, I'm Grace, I like to raw jog. <laughs> I can also use Excel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will say, like now a year into being sterile, I, I'll say, I'll say it, it's a mindset. <laughs> being sterile is a mindset. Like, yeah, it is a physical way of being, but like at the end of the day, you gotta get your head in the game. <laughs> and like, I forget I'm sterile all the time. For example, every Sunday morning, I still take plan B. <laughs> Um, like, I'm taking it as a vitamin now. <laughs> it's like a reward, you know? <laughs> For being a total slut. And uh, my mom especially loves to remind me that even though I can't get pregnant, I can still get STDs. And I'm like, no, I can't, bitch. I have my crystals. <laughs> All right, you guys, been great.